Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So um, I was out buying some wine because I really wanted to get a, a show recorded today and um, saw a couple of wines that really have never had before. So I thought, why the heck not? Let's, you know, let's try a couple of these things because you know, um, I'm always looking for new, interesting. So um, I've seen these on the shelves and they look like good value wines. So um, I figured, you know, I might as well go ahead and take care of it. So let's just get right into it because um, I'm kind of pressed for time right now. So we got the Arbor Mist Chardonnay. Um, it says Tropical Fruits. Looks like it's a non-vintage. So um, I'm going to try it. Arbor Mist, can't, um, not a whole heck of a lot about it on the, uh, on the internet. I've got a Wikipedia entry. Um, they've got a website. Doesn't have a whole lot of information on it, so um, let's just get right into it. Oh, I went to Don's and Ben's, uh, which is a liquor store here in uh, San Antonio area, and uh, paid four ninety nine for it. So on the nose, oh, well, it just say tropical fruits on it. I mean, it's. It's like guava and pineapple and guava and pineapple. Peaches, peaches for days on this. I don't think you've ever had a Chardonnay exactly smell like that. I mean, it really smells like, you know, the whole, um, like you got one of those Starburst tropical fruit things. All right, let's move on to the next wine. All right, Boone's Farm. This might be the shortest episode ever. Boone's Farm, um, called an American original, Strawberry Hill flavored citrus wine. I, I, I just bought these real quick. Um, Boone's Farm doesn't really have much. They have a, a fan club. Uh, website is produced by Ian J. Gallo. Um, says it was um, formerly an apple wine, and it says now it's a malt-based uh, beverage instead of wine-based. So I, I didn't realize that when I bought it. You know, because it says flavored citrus wine. So Strawberry Hill. Well, let's check it out. Also appears to be non-vintage. Got this for three dollars and. 33 cents. Three is a magic number. Also at Don's and Ben's. No, well, definitely strawberries on the nose. Kind of fakish. Not really as pungent as the Arbor Mist. Really very lightly flavored strawberry. Um, I, I don't know what other grapes. It was this malt base, so. My guess is it's probably not a single grape in it. What did this say? It was apple based, so apple wine. So I'm not really sure what, what in the world's in this thing. So I mean, yeah. April Fools. This is the real frickin' wine review. I didn't lie, I've never had those two wines in my life. So real quick, we'll, we'll kind of go over 
So fortified, flavored wines or flavored fortified wines. I didn't get the Thunderbird, I didn't get the Mad Dog. I, the Mad Dog that was at Don's and Men's was some orange, it looked like orange juice with like, I don't know what, I was afraid to even try that. And I didn't see the Thunderbird till I was walking out the door and I wasn't about to rush back in and buy it. So um, Thunderbird is kind of like the classic Thunderbird Night Train Mad Dog, or I'm sorry, MD 2020. MD, if you didn't really know, actually stands for Mogan David, who was the original producer of, um, uh, was the original, is, is the producer of the wine. So MD was just, Mad Dog's just kind of a, you know, a, a, a fake reference to it. Um, you got Night Train, Ripple, Thunderbird. I mean, these, these are all the ones that are actually more the fortified wines. That's what I was trying to find, but I was pressed for time and Boone's Farm and Arbor Mist and some other one was all I could find on the shelves in a couple places. Um, and uh, anyway, so, um, you know, I'm going to get a different wine glass. <laughs> I'm going to get a different wine glass because, well, I don't want to mix up two different wines or mix up all that junk. Listen, man, I can understand why people like that stuff, but it's not wine, or it's not the kind of wine that we would normally drink. But anyway, um, so it was, it was interesting. I did a little research on it, you know. Um, uh, Ian J. Gallo is the producer now of Boone's Farm. Uh, there really is a Boone's Farm fan club. There was a, it's, it's a Wikipedia knockoff that had an article about Boone's Farm. It was pretty funny. It was basically a bunch of comedians creating their own Wikipedia type of website. Uh, Arbor Mist really does have a website. Um, they've got, they produce a ton of stuff. Um, it first appeared in 1998 in the United States and was the best selling wine debut since the 1970s. Um, and from what I understand, Strawberry Hill is like the classic, like what most people have had first. All right. Real wine. All right. So, um, by the way, when I bought both of them, it, the total price was $8.88. I said to the clerk, so that's a lucky number in China. And she said it wasn't a lucky number for her. Now, I went to Total Wine first. I was really trying to find all that crap there. Uh, and of course the girl was like disgusted that I asked for that. I said, it's for a joke. And then I went here and bought these two wines. So we're having Italian tonight, um, go figure. Uh, Dad's making sauce has been marinating all day. Um, uh, so I decided to get some Italian wine and I bought two wines that actually on my day job are on the list. And I think I only have one bottle of each of these left. So in my mind, actually, I'm waiting for these bottles to sell so I can just get them off my list. Not that these are bad wines. We're just not a, we're not an Italian place. So, um, however, after having these wines, I might change my mind and say, we're going to keep them. So I have never had these wines also. So we're going to start with the Masi Campofiorn. Um, this is a, uh, going to the website is, we said was his, oh, I'm sorry. This is the 2010 um, Masi Campo Fiorin. It's a Rosso de Veronese uh, IGT. So this is the Veneto, I'm sorry, I'll be there, the Veneto region of Italy. And um, did the core in. I even left the foil on. And, uh, whoops. And uh, anyway, so in 1964, Masi uh, created what's, called a Super Venetian. Um, and uh, it uses, this particular bottling uses Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. Now, um, Valpolicella's also come from this area. And this is not a Valpolicella DOC, but it's the same grape varieties that are used by Valpolicella, okay? So, um, there we go. Anyway. Um, these guys have been around for a while. Uh, it's, um, I didn't go look at the history real quick of, of them, but uh, these guys have been around for a while. They are a well-known, um, a well-known um, winemaking. Um, 
remember uh, from last week, I had uh, a similar uh, name uh, with, with the wine. I, these guys might be related, but uh, I was going to see if there's anything. So uh, the history of the Masi, uh, history of Masi is a history of a family and its vineyards in the Venetian regions. The name itself derives from Valle dei Masi, the small valley in Valpolicella acquired by the Boscani uh, family, who, who are still its owners at the end of the 18th century. They used Roman numerals for that. Uh, today, Sandro uh, Boscani... Uh, company president and managing director runs Masi with the help of his daughter, Alessandra, in charge of sales administration, his son, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, um, it didn't really say when they were founded necessarily there. Try to see if there's something else on here that tells us. Um, nope. It doesn't. How about History. Go history real quick here. Um, it's the making wine for a thousand years. History of Masi, blah, 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 blah. Already know that. Uh, since 1973, Masi has collaborated with the Conti Serego Alighieri family, descendants of poet Dante, on their estates in Valpolicella. More recently, a collaboration has been launched with the Conti Balsi. Uh, Fedri, Fedrigotti family um, in Trentino, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't really say, other than 1973, if anything's happened before then. All right, so, I'm saying, well, see, Harvest Scenes in the Segro, blah, blah, blah. 1921, they had a picture from, from Harvest in 1921 from the um, Sergio Allegri family. So, I'm going to assume that Wine's been made here um, for quite a while. All right, so what, what is this? Um, so this is a, um, a wine that is partially made in an Amarone style. So um, from the co-brand website, who's the distributor um, of this, um, it is 25% uh, well, it's, it's, I'm sorry, fermented from fresh grapes is re-fermented with 25% of whole grapes that are semi-dried for about six weeks of the same variety. So uh, that would be Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. So um, Amarone is made from dried grapes, and we're going to get to that in a second. So they take some of the, they, they hold back some of those grapes, let them dry for about six weeks, so they become raisins. And then they re-ferment the wine with that. What that does is it gives it gives the yeast more sugars to do that. It tends to be a little bit higher alcohol wine, uh, full-bodied. Uh, this wine, though, is only 13% alcohol. So um, it doesn't mean you're going to get a 16% alcohol wine. It just, it's a cool region. So um, if I remember how this all works, the wines are going to be much lower in percentage, like maybe a 12%, 11.5%, 12% with the addition of the 25% Repasso uh, grapes, well, not Repasso, but um, dried grapes, that's going to give you um, a little bit more alcohol. Uh, a total wine, I paid $13.99 for this. All right, so remember, this is straight out of the bottle. Really haven't had any chance to do much else. Really did not chill it. I mean, it sat in the sat in the wine fridge for like a total of maybe 10, 15 minutes. So it's not like it's cold, cold. So off the nose, I mean, it's almost like this hint of 4th of July fireworks. So a bit of smokiness. Um, that kind of concerns me because smoke bomb means sulfur. So, you know, maybe it's just the sulfur getting blown out. I don't really get much else. I mean, other than the smokiness, uh, I don't really get any necessarily wood or spice or fruit or floral. So maybe a bit of spice. I don't know.
I mean, on the palette, um, granted, I still feel like I had the other stuff in here. Hold on. On the palette, definitely more brambly. Uh, get the wood. Um, tannins are, let's say, moderate. Ass is pretty high. And that's actually, um, that should be a characteristic of wines from the Veneto region with high acid. Um, to get the higher sugar levels, they have to, they have to um, harvest very late. And especially when you're talking about Amarone wines, they tend to, and Valpolicella's. So this is almost a Valpolicella, but it's not a Valpolicella DOC, okay? This is an IGT. But with, with these wines, they tend to pick as late as possible. Uh, before any botrytis might might hit, because um, they're really trying to get the sugar levels high, the acidity is high because it's um, a cooler region. And as I'm talking, I'm really getting this a better smoke, not the sulfur smoke, but a, a, a higher level of smokiness. Okay, coming through. It's really like like a smoked meat type of thing, like like your like your like. Someone like you're at like at a like a barbecue and they've got the, the smoker going, okay? Got the wood, you got the smoke, like savoriness to it. Really, as I breathe out through my nose, I really get that that aroma. And so that's this is a better um, smoke flavor or or aroma rather than that smoke bomb Fourth of July type of thing. And things are blown off a little bit, so I mean, it's 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 you know that that initial, you know, it happens a lot. You know, you get that initial pour; it's not necessarily the best. Still, don't really get much fruit or anything else on the nose. Get a bit of tartness to it. Um, red fruits, generically, I don't really have anything specific. Um, so it, it's it's not bad. I mean, it is a fourteen dollar bottle of wine, so it's not like you're going to be, um, you know, it's not like you're, you're it's not like it's going to be a really really high end. But um, for fourteen dollars, um, definitely need some food and. Um, Sorry, looking behind me to see if anyone's on camera, which I don't think they are. Anyway, um, it's more brambly and and mineral driven and smoke. Yep, someone's on camera. You know you're on camera, right? There's no green screen to hide you. I know. Okay. That's oh. dad, by the way. Barely can see him. Vinny Crumbs. Anyway. See, folks, you, typically if I'm recording when other people are in the house, the green screen hides anyone in the back. But doesn't realize I don't have the green screen up because I'm being lazy. Anyway, um, Brambly uh, got good smoke. Um, I'm not super excited about the wine. It's a $14 bottle of Italian wine. Um, it's not terribly bad. Um, I don't know if I would be like rushing out to go buy another bottle. Um, we're gonna, since I got through the glass, I'm gonna go ahead and pour another glass. I know my opinion of wine has changed after um, having a little bit more. And it's not, it's not terrible. I mean, I really like that smokiness, that after, that, that after aroma, if you wanna call it that. Um, it definitely feels like it needs like some food, roasted meats, that type of thing. You know, maybe a, a, a bolognese sauce type of thing, a good meat sauce. Um, maybe with a, a good rustic pizza. Um, but I mean, as far as a wine on its own, I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not like screaming from the top of the hills. Wow, I really poured a lot in there, didn't I? I'm getting used to how the pour the wine is versus how, how long I, I hold the button.
yeah, there's really, the second taste is much better, but I really don't get a whole heck of a lot out of it. I'm just want to see if it has anything in tasting notes. Nose, ripe cherries and sweet spices. Nope. Palate, rich, intense cherries and berry fruit, good length and soft tannins. I'll go with the second half of that. I don't get, maybe spices, like I said, I did get maybe a little bit of spice, like on the, on the second round. I, I guess so. If I had to pick a fruit, maybe cherry, but I, don't, I wouldn't call it intense cherries. I don't really get a lot of berry fruit. Rich is not a word I would describe this wine. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's okay. It's a $14 bottle of wine. I think I'd rather drink other $14 bottles of Italian wine. All right, remember, hold the clamp, dummy. Ooh. There we go. Got a little bit of wine that decided to pop out for a second. All right, let's move on to wine number two. Curtains closed and open probably by now. All right. So, let's close all those real quick. Sartori. Now this is an Amarone. Um, this is the, what vintage is this? 2009 Sartori di Verona, uh, estate collection Amarone della Valpolicella. Um, we're gonna do a short little burst just to rinse. That's the kind of color I'm used to from uh, Amarones and Valpolicellas, because they tend to be, especially with a little bit of age on it, they don't tend to be very intense red. They tend to almost have like a brown, a brown uh, color to it, a brownish red to it. Sometimes referred to as brick red. Color we're not supposed to use in the court. Okay. The bottle's kind of heavy, so arm's shaking a little bit with holding it up so high. So Sartori, let's talk about them for a little bit. Um, let's, go, let's go to the, let's go to the English version real quick. All right, so um, the vineyards for this are in the hilly area north of Verona. Um, the grapes are hand-picked grapes and carefully air-dried on wooden racks for 100 days. Uh, traditional pressing and fermentation are followed by a minimum of three years in aged Slavonian oak casks. Um, it is 50% Corvina, 30% uh, Corvinone, 15% Rondinella, and 5% Cabernet Sauvignon. Let's pull up that actual vintage. Still says the same thing. Okay, so 50, 30, 15, and five. Okay. And uh, so let's see here. Uh, from, from, their, uh, from, from the website, and this is part of the Bonfi uh, group of wines, wine, uh, wine group. Uh, to Juliet's questions, what's in a name? The Sartori family would answer everything. For over a century, Sartori, a leading name in fine wines from Northeast Italy's Veneto region, has stood for traditional values Elevated by innovation, a dedication to quality, and above all, balanced passion for quality winemaking, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, in 1898, uh, Pietro Sartori bought the uh, Villa Maria, a vineyard with a small cellar attached in the heart of Veneto's region, Valpolicella, Valpolicella District, um, to assure a high quality, to assure a source of high quality wine for his hotel. So I guess he had a hotel, bought this, bought this winery. Um, this marked the advent of Sartori di Verona, 
A few years later, Pietro's son, Regolo, built the winery into the family's core business. And by the 50s, uh, his two sons expanded the winery and brought these wines to international recognition, exporting them around the world. Um, 2002, the jumpy joined with Cantina uh, Colonia, uh, Colo Colonola. That one I'm not sure because G and N usually has that, like the, the Nia sound. So, Colonola, Colonola, yeah, Colonola, Colonola. Uh, giving the family rare guaranteed access to more than 6,200 acres of high quality grapes in the Suave and Valpolicello zones, uh, where few wine houses control their own vineyards. 2003, Sartori hired the renowned Franco Bernabe as consulting winemaker. Um, 2006, Sartori introduced a new premium collection of Veneto wines, blah, 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 blah. So, They've been making wine for a long time, let's put it that way. So Amarone, again, this is, uh, uh, they harvest the same grapes as in Valpolicella, but they let them sit on mats or some type of drying air room uh, for f three to four months. Uh, and that allows these grapes to really concentrate on the sugars and they make the wine strictly from that, okay? Rapasso wine. Now Rapasso wine is Valpolicella that they've added these grapes to, okay? So that last wine is kind of like the Rapasso style, but not quite. Um, with Rapasso, um, they, um, they take the pomace of the leftover grape skins uh, and seeds from the fermentation of a, the Ricciotto, which is a sweet wine, uh, and Amarone are added to a batch of Valpolicella wines for what's called extended maceration. Um, so that allows them to increase the alcohol level. And what's the alcohol level on the Amarone? Uh, that is 15%. All right, so let's check it out. So you can kind of smell the raisinated uh, qualities to it, almost like plum or prune, more like prune, raisin, overripe fruit. You know, it has a, a some of a sweet smell to it. Yeah, prunes, raisins, dried apricot. So dried fruit really coming off the nose. and a little bit of like chocolate, like um, dark chocolate. So maybe these fruits are covered in chocolate. Maybe some tobacco. I mean, this is a beautiful wine. It's also, oh, did I say $39.99? So this wasn't the cheap bottle. This wasn't the value wine. This was a little bit expensive. It's the reason why it costs as much as it does at the restaurant. Fully fermented dry. However, there is a bit of a sweetness to it. Again, the raisinated fruits. This is a beautiful wine. Like, you should buy this wine. Like, if you can afford the 40 bucks. If you want to treat yourself to something a little bit special on a, on a date night at the house, or if you've got the extra scratch, this is a fairly expensive bottle of wine in a restaurant. Um, so if you're wanting something like this, you're not going to go wrong with the amount of money you're spending on the wine. A little bit of that cedar box, um, a little bit of dust, not quite is not quite the uh, leather felt and dust that I would get from the stereotypical Italian wine, but kind of that uh, 
that wine box, cedar box, cigar box, where you want to say um, uh, aroma from the from the palate, um, the raisinated or dried fruit, dried apricot too. Uh, I don't get as much of the chocolate. Yeah, I don't get as much of the chocolate from the from the palate, but um, this is really good. Like, this is what we're gonna drink at dinner tonight. Okay. This is definitely the the dinner wine tonight. I was kind of hoping the the comp would would be the dinner wine tonight, and this would be like more of the special wine. But I mean, it is a special wine, but. I don't really get the chocolate, but I do get that woodsiness, uh, the dried fruit, um, some minerality to it. I get almost a little bit of like savoriness. Like I can really like I can really taste like uh, I can imagine eating meatballs with this. And the meat some some people make, we don't really do it here, but we make some people make meatballs with the, like a little bit of like I guess cinnamon or or nutmeg. You know, that type of spices in there, totally can get that. I mean, this if you make your meatballs that way or put that into your sauce, I can totally get that. Absolutely excellent wine. I highly recommend that one. So uh, that's the um, April Fool's episode. I've been trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate what I call gas station wines or the bum wines into, into an episode and not be really bad about it. I thought of all these different ways, but and we're talking like a couple years I've been trying to figure out how I was going to do this. Um, one of the people that I work with came up with the idea of just straight up, just do as a wine review and don't get too far into it and just be like, we're done with that. We're going to get to the real wine. Because I'll be honest, these are going to be dumped down the drain. Um, I would rather drink two buck chuck than this. Okay. Besides, it has more alcohol in it. These are low alcohol. I don't know about Thund Thunderbird probably has more alcohol in it. Probably closer to like 5 to 15 to, this is fortified wine. So I have like close to 20% alcohol and it's about the same amount of money, it's two buck chuck, so you'll probably get a better, or not better, you'll probably get a, a faster buzz with it um, for the same price. But as far as drinking these, I mean, they're, they're just they're just sugar water. So, I mean, you're not drinking wine. If, if I mean, I'd rather drink a wine cooler, okay? Back when I first, my first experience with this stuff, you know, Bartles and James type of stuff, I'd rather drink that than these. So, do yourself a favor. If you, if you, if you were young and you drank this, that's great. If you've never had it, you're not missing anything. I, I've never had them. I've never had Thunderbird. I've never had any of that crap. I have no plans on trying any of it now. I've had these two. It's enough. You know, this over that. Um, definitely this. But um, anyway, I had to get that uh, recorded. The, obviously, this is re this is released on April Fool's Day instead of on Monday. Um, the initial release did not have anything as far as what I was drinking i just said hey i you know rushed out of blah 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 so if you're watching this on april fools well now you know what i had if you're watching it a week or so later yes i put the description in there what it is um because about 90 percent of the views come from the first few days of of the actual of the actual release of the episode i don't think i have anything else to talk about no, I don't get the Sartori. I, I'd pass on the Massey. I mean, if you're drinking it, you're drinking it. If someone bought it for you, you know, if it was on the wine list and there was really nothing else there, okay, for the price point. But if you've got the scratch to spend, that's not going to do you any wrong. I, 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 I'd, honestly, I'd rather drink like some, you know, same price to Chianti instead. Um, that's going to do it. 
As always, thank you for stopping by. Click the links above to friend me. Uh, click the links above to friend me up. Hit the donate button over here to send me some ducats so I don't have to resort to buying Thunderbird, Arbor Mist, Mad Dog, Bones Farm. Please. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, we will see everyone again next time.